everyone. During excavations in Egypt during the 1920s, archaeologists found a handful of wheat in a tomb belonging to one of the ancient kings. The wheat would have been about 5,000 years old. Someone decided to plant the grains and to their amazement they grew and came to life. Now, my faith in the resurrection will be like those dormant grains until I come to know Jesus as a real living person who touches my life in the here and now with his reassuring presence. There is an old French proverb which says, God often visits us, but mostly we're not at home. That's what happened to Thomas, the apostle. We're not at home if our faith in him is just book knowledge, or we're hooked on the idea that science explains everything. Of course, that doesn't at all mean that we're anti-science. After all, it was a Catholic priest who first came up with the Big Bang Theory. Also, the very first observatory in the world was in the Vatican. And, as you know, the Church, the Catholic Church, was the first to establish universities in the world, and they always had a science department and humanities department. Thomas would not believe that Jesus had risen until he'd seen him in the flesh, but Jesus gently tells him, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Well, that is us. The resurrection, I believe, has more to do with transformation of the inner man or woman than seeing him in the flesh. If Jesus were to walk into this church right now after, and after all the excitement had died down and the dust settled, would there be any guarantee that we would go out and live more Christian lives? I doubt it very much. However, even though we don't see Jesus in the flesh, we believe in the words he spoke to the apostles before his ascension when he said, Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of time. Now in the news, we've seen where a previous prime minister was applauded by some and vilified by others for saying that we we're a Christian country. He was obviously speaking of Christian in the broadest possible terms. I believe it was the church in this country, singularly Catholic for the first thousand years of our existence, which laid the foundation for the values we take for granted. But the division between churches today on many important issues, even on the doctrine of the resurrection itself, <coughs> puts an overall question mark over our overall credibility as a Christian country. The more divided we are, the less credible we become. <coughs> Excuse me. Hand in hand with being a Christian, we also believe allegiance to a church is part of the packet. It is primarily through the church's liturgy and sacraments, especially the Mass, that we encounter our risen Lord. Twice after the resurrection, our Lord reveals himself to the apostles in the context of a meal, a clear reference there to the Eucharist. Pope St. John Paul II said in one of his documents, encyclicals, the Eucharist stands at the centre of the church's life. Without the Eucharist, a vital link in the Christian chain is missing. Put it like this, I wouldn't rely on a churchless Christianity to get me into heaven, which is my final destiny. Thomas wanted to touch the Lord's wounds, but it is Thomas who is touched when Jesus reveals to him his true identity. All his doubts disappear. Now as we grow in faith, our doubts will dissipate as well. Now, here are some questions I'd like you to consider. First, when might we not be at home when God visits us? Second, will science and religion ever be comfortable bedfellows? 
third. Jesus says, I am with you always until the end of time. What does this mean to you? Fourth, when it is said that this country is a Christian country, what does that really mean? Last, is the position and authority of the Pope the sticking point as far as ultimate union with other Christian bodies is concerned? How would you answer these questions? Now thank you all for listening and God bless you all.